Dr. Khan, first of all, thank you so much for being here and spending the time with us. I really appreciate it. I know that you're in such high demand and that your schedule is tight. So thank no, you. It's all good. It, it just strikes me. I'm drinking uh, turmeric tea and the coloring that I'm enjoying in my home is turmeric colored. Uh, that's a good thing to drink. <laughs> Improve the background by shutting a uh, cabinet. But uh, anyways, we've got good connection and I'll just be the turmeric cardiologist. That's uh, better than being the beef cardiologist. That's okay. Yes. So I've told everyone that you are a holistic cardiologist and that you use plant-based nutrition and integrative medicine to prevent and reverse heart disease. But for those of us who uh, for those of us who don't know your background yet, I mean, I do, but for there's several hundred people on, for the people who haven't yet had a chance to really get to know you and your background, what you do, could you just dive into that just a little bit? Sure. Um, great. I had like a couple funny things in life, but you know, you can, what's a statement, life, what's happened to you while you're planning other things. Mm -hmm. I uh, was born with a little heart murmur, meaning my pediatrician when I was born heard something made my mother very worried. I just started seeing pediatric cardiologists. Nothing ever happened, I'm fine. You get little, mm -hmm. holes in, little holes in your heart to heal up. But if you would have asked me when I was eight or nine years old, they would have said, I wanna be a cardiologist. It was just cool being around lights and bells and whistles. And this is back in the days that there was uh, tongue depressors and cotton swabs and alcohol. I kind of liked all of it. Not from a medical family, but that kind of determined my cardiology path. I was like laser beam. I'm going to be a heart doctor. And that's worked out well. <laughs> I grew up in a home where we kept kosher. We didn't eat pork. We didn't eat cheeseburgers. Okay. We ate great stuff. When I went to University of Michigan, way before you were born, 1977, when I was 18, because I'm 61 and a half now, um, the only choice was actually the salad bar. And it wasn't like a real thoughtful thing. It was just there's stuff I don't eat. There's a gorgeous salad bar. Ann Arbor was a very vegetarian friendly town. I mm -hmm. haven't touched meat, cheese, dairy, eggs since 1988, uh, 1977, sorry, 43 years now. Uh, wow. That was coincidence. And it just turned out I felt great. I didn't have any background, nutrition. I went to med school, became a cardiologist. I just ate a lot of okra and salads and bean soups. I had a girlfriend that did the same thing in the same dorm. She's been my wife for nearly 40 years now. So wow. she's, got, she's a nurse and uh, many other things, but it worked out well for her too, because we're both over 60 and we have energy and we don't take prescription drugs. And mm -hmm. uh, she's a little better at keeping at the perfect body weight. I'm not bad, but you know, uh, compared to a lot of people I take care of in their 60s, we're very lucky. And you know, you can't guarantee because it still could turn out I never tell anybody, so you're vegan, so don't get medical care. No, that's not right. Mm -hmm. And then finally, having you know this kind of nutrition focus, I started reading, I started studying, and books. And then 1990, this is the last part of the story, I w began my practice. I've been in practice for 30 years. Love what I do. But uh, Dr. Dean Ornish published a very famous study called The Lifestyle Heart Trial three weeks after I started my job. And I wasn't going to use nutrition with my patients. There really mm -hmm. wasn't that much out there. Mr. Nathan Pritikin. Pritikin diet was the big foundation. Oh, uh, yes. But Dr. Orna showed, shabam, you know, a little meditation, a little yoga, a little breathing, a little group support, and a whole food plant-based diet, mm -hmm. 1988, 1989 version. Not too many Trader Joe Whole Foods, but simple foods. You can pulp and reverse serious heart disease. So I... You know, three weeks into my practice said, I've got two toolboxes. I've got the medication, surgery, stent toolbox. And I better tell people to go buy Dr. Ornish's book or read his paper or find, you know, there was no internet at the time. So it wasn't like a website. And it was very gratifying to see how quickly uh, those that were forward thinking and would do it uh, benefited from adding lifestyle and nutrition. And I just kept doing it. So about five years ago, I really changed my practice to not rush through in five or 10 minutes, but I always would take out my prescription pad, every patient and I write on it. You need mm. to read this book. You need to read the China study. You need yeah. to read Dr. Esselstyn's book when they came out. And now it's easy on the web. I, my typical statement to a patient is, you have to watch these three documentaries and then I'll see you back. And it's forks over knives, what the health and game changers. And you know, I don't have a 100% conversion rate, um, but 
I'm always impressed how some people just like, whoa, I didn't know this. I'm on board. My diabetes, my erectile dysfunction, my blood pressure, my cholesterol, my heart disease. I don't want those things because I do see a lot of people that are younger and healthy. Mm -hmm. um, the earlier you start focusing on diet, fitness, sleep, stress, lifestyle, and particularly whole food, plant-based nutrition, the earlier in life, I just stumbled into it. But there's clear data that, you know, it's great to do it for a year or three years. But if you do it for 10, 20, 30, 40 plus, or there's children now that are born and have never uh, eaten animal foods, but eat a good variety of whole food, nutritious, colorful uh, foods. Uh, it's an amazingly powerful program. It doesn't guarantee I'm not that um, uh, confident that I'd say, you know, don't go see a doctor, just go grow a garden, you know, do both. But you won't need your doctor very much. Your medical bills will likely be much less and your joy of life and quality of life will be much better. So that's the story. Here I am. And here you are. And I, and I love that because I, well, as you know, I'm obviously plant-based myself and I work very holistically with people. Um, again, it's all whole, whole, you know, whole food, plant-based, eating the rainbow. And so I, I, I right. love, I love what it is that you, how you practice and what you share. We did have a couple people that asked again, what the three documentaries were. So it's Forks sure. Over Knives, right? Yeah, you know, Forks Over Knives, 2011. It's been available on Netflix. I think it's currently maybe not off uh, on Netflix, but you can find it. Mm -hmm. It's very powerful. It's very accurate. Tells the story of Dr. Colin Campbell, who wrote the blockbuster hit, The China Study. Yes. It tells the story of Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, who converted from surgery to preventive medicine at the Cleveland mm -hmm. Clinic. And they're still both going strong in their mid to getting on to their late 80s, quite remarkable humans. And then What the Health 2017, I have a small little cameo, but it's a well done discussion of food as medicine. And then the big blockbuster of 2019, the Game Changers movie that James Cameron produced. So we're upgrading to you know really high level Hollywood talent. Uh, and it's just a fun, accurate movie. There's medical references flying all over the place. Yes. If you have the time, and probably on their website, you can get them all. It, they had a very good team of fact-checking and uh, medical uh, personnel. And it's a great movie. And really, that there are just, you know, we know it. You, there's a statement you can, I think Juliana Hever, the plant-based dietitian, says this. You can bring somebody to good food. You can't make them eat. All yeah. I can do is open people's eyes, offer them reversal, offer them <laughs> prevention, offer them either don't get disease, or maybe we can reduce your medication, improve your quality of life. But you know, what side effect is there to switch from beef chili to bean chili other than maybe a little gas, but that can be fun. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's really powerful. And then you just see people that, you know, they drop 90 pounds, they yeah. are off their medicine, their blood sugar goes from crazy to under control with food alone. It's not a guarantee that a lot of people can get there though. Some people just can reduce the medication. And there are those that are just frustrated. They're doing it and they're not getting their goal. And we got to dig deep what exactly are they eating. I do crazy labs, vitamin levels and inflammation levels. So I do a real high tech clinic. I'm in Detroit, Michigan. I didn't say that, but I see people all over the world with telehealth. But you got to use the, the latest, the greatest technology. I kind of call it high tech. High touch, high fiber, what I do. High tech. Yeah. It's not high touch anymore. It's all Zoom. But, yeah. you know, high tech. I use the latest cutting edge labs and vascular evaluation, genetic evaluation, lately aging evaluation. But the fundamentals are, you know, fruit, vegetable, whole grains, and legumes. Water, sparkling waters, teas, black coffee. Simple, simple stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and thank you for that reminder to everyone who is trying to make a shift in their diet. Uh, it is actually really simple. And it's just about staying consistent and staying focused on that. So I mean, I do things from a nutritionist point of view, very similar. I run all the different labs and it's a very comprehensive Good. approach because there's lifestyles a part of it. And since I practice Reiki, I also I also yeah. incorporate that spiritual aspect of it um, and that energy into into the foods and the protocols that I that I give people for the program. That's the best, and you know, and you can add energy from living foods. I don't eat a raw yes. diet. I, 
I'm a salad maniac. I, yeah. Another hero out there, Chef AJ, who says eat a salad every day bigger than your head. And yeah. certainly I did that before, but since COVID came around, I make sure every day, I, literally every color in the world and a big salad with some vinegars and lemon juice and nuts and seeds. I'm not adverse to some really good quality extra virgin olive oil on a salad. Uh, that's a big debate in the medical plant-based doctor world, but I am, for most people, pro extra virgin olive oil. There's actually a brand new study this week that extra virgin olive oil in a Mediterranean diet improves endothelial function. A lot mm -hmm. of people say, whoa, I heard doctors say it harms it. Mm -hmm. There's a few that say it harms. There's more that say it improves. Anyways, it's an enjoyable life, and yeah. uh, and it really is delicious. And I, you know, sprouts, I just recently, I used to do sprouts and dirt. It was messy. Now I just finally figured out the very small talent it takes to put sprouted seeds and nuts and lentils into a mason jar. And, it's so you know, easy. The freshest, you know, most energetic food as yes. taught by Brian Clements at Hippocrates and Gabriel Cousins at Tree of Life and uh, my friend Doug Evans, uh, who's got the new book called The Sprout Book, which is a mm -hmm. great book. And so, yeah, we just always have a few mason jars, you know, it's, and it's like it, it, you you can't mess up and you can't make a mess either. It's just so it's easy. It's the best. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I, we have some too here. I mean, broccoli sprouts are one of the best best foods that you yeah. can. And I like I like the the spicy the radish yeah. sprouts and broccoli sprouts. I mean, they add so much flavor to anything. Yeah, like and this. it's so easy. You like what you said. You can't mess it up. You just throw it in. Some, if anyone is, is if anyone wants to know how to start, you can literally just go to Amazon and type in sprouts in a sprout kit and. If you already have mason jars, it's just a cover that you buy for it. And then you order some organic, um, on organic non-GMO seeds, and it you'll have sprouts in like two days. Yep, so, that's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's really, really simple. So uh, we're on the same, and I honor your Reiki practice. It's uh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and I love, again, that you said really eat the rainbow. That's something that I talk about all the time. Like throughout yeah. the course of your day, you want to make sure you get all the colors into your body on your plate. Um, we have so many questions. Okay. So I, I had questions. Well, we have like 75, 75,000 people are on. Wow, you're popular. No way. Really? Oh, I'm it's it's I'm 700 sorry. here. <laughs> by the time like... they share it around, it'll be 75,000. So, oh yeah, by the time this is all shared. So we had people um, that really had, there is, you know, that there is controversy between a purely plant-based diet um, and and having protein. I mean, we there's people here that obviously follow like Dave Asprey, who you know says he went vegan, but then he you know then he had all these toxins in him from the mold from plants, and so there were definitely lots of people who weren't plant-based yet. You know, they do plant-heavy, but were considering doing being vegan, being plant-based, but have somewhat of a fear because of these other things that they've heard. Right. So I would love for you to address that. You know, yeah, Miley Cyrus didn't help us very much in the last couple of oh, weeks. Oh, yes, yeah. You know, she saw a friend of mine, and I greatly honored Daniel Amen, MD, who's a brain specialist, but she would have come and seen a plant-based doctor. I think we could have got her feeling good. Uh, it's not the biggest sin in the world to eat fish a few times a week with a plant diet. Many of my patients do. There is a world-class scientist, Dr. Walter Longo at University of Southern California, who without any label vegan paleo keto, he says 19 vegan meals a week of whole foods and two pieces of fish a week. That, that would change the world if that's where people adopted. And if you give up the last two meals and you did all plants, it would change the world. The difference is actually very small. And there's a very small group of people that might be better off avoiding the fish, assuming it's not an ethical decision or an environmental decision. Right. Um, you know, very serious heart patients, maybe type two diabetes really struggling to improve, might be better off with every meal being plant-based. But can you imagine what the world would be like if people ate 18 or 19 rainbow plant meals and I mean, they accommodated for restaurants? I love eating in steakhouses because it's the best broccoli. It's the best baked potato. It's the best string beans. And I've done that for, you know, literally decades. Mm -hmm. I've never suffered, you know, in a, in a steakhouse anywhere in the world. I just obviously don't eat the steak and make sure there's no butter and cheese on top. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't, I'm not rushing to criticize people. I'd rather include them and love on them. I know Dave Asprey very well. We, mm -hmm. in fact, I will tell you, we 
have a very famous discussion slash debate that's on YouTube. It's at Google World Headquarters about two and a half years ago. Um, uh, I forget what it's called, Google Talk. And people can look at hundreds of thousands of views. But after we did that, the third person on the panel was Kip Anderson, who was the producer of the movie, What the Health. Mm -hmm. We went to the cafeteria in Google Headquarters. I actually had an easier time eating than Dave because his bulletproof diet is so restrictive. They didn't have organic bison, uh, you know, right. in the cafeteria. We ended right. up eating this. We both ate the salad bar. Right. Um, and I'm so accommodated and used to it. I mean, I'm pretty darn careful with my diet and I'd rather mm -hmm. eat organic. So it's funny. I mean, there's no reason to put butter and coconut oil in your coffee. It's the biggest BS in the world. And if anybody, the problem is there isn't one study of 10 people, what happens to your cholesterol, your inflammation, your vascular supply. We have it from other studies of similar approaches. Drink a glass of cream, see what happens to your arteries. Uh, drink a high fat meal, see what happens to your cognitive function. Women with a high fat animal based breakfast, their cognitive function, their memory goes down for a few hours. We know it from other studies. It's just nobody's organized an anti bulletproof coffee study. And actually, to be fair, you just any study, you wouldn't want to come in with a bias. But anyways, that's an aside. I'll tell you, giving a shout out, Dr. Dean Ornish, 20 years ago, wrote a book called The Spectrum. Still a wonderful book. Yes. He's more flexible as I am in my approach. His book was, if you've got severe disease, here's the lifestyle heart trial. You should adopt completely what we taught. If you're healthy, here's that 70%, 80%, 90% point. And you've already improved and upgraded from the average American diet. So we don't want to, you know, push people away. I mean, if you're doing it and you're healthy and you're young and you have a pizza on a weekend, I mean, just don't send me the picture on Instagram, but you know, you're, you're still so far better than average. Yes, no, I mean, and I'm so, I, I love everything you said and thank you so much for sharing that because coming from you, it just, it, it, it goes so much further. Yeah, I agree with you with, the ghee and the oil in coffee. It, I have clients that ask me that all the time. And I just say, I don't really think it's necessary. There hasn't been, like what you said, cases that studies that show the opposite of that. Like what is what happens when you're doing this for 10, 15, 20 years? Is it really that necessary? I mean, there's so many other ways we can support our brain and, and our bodies and our organs. Um, so so thank you for, for sharing that. We do have, uh, Dave asked me that kill is toxic. Um, and he didn't say it was toxic. He just said that there's there's mold in that if if um, vegetation isn't cleaned properly, it's sometimes there can be mold. And, you know, there's, there's mold. Mold is real. It got a documentary. Certainly suffered. But you know, it it is puzzling. It's a whole topic we can do again. Why do some vegans abandon the movement or don't feel good? What are the pitfalls? But frankly, you don't have to have a PhD in this stuff, but you don't want to be eating chips and Mountain Dew and Skittles and say, I'm vegan. We all know that, you know, other than a rare treat, if that's a treat, it's not going to work for people. And certainly don't feed children that kind of, quote, vegan crap. It's not going to work. They oh, need real yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, um, what's some of the questions you got? Let's fire them out. Uh, so someone had asked about the high thallium that was in the dark green vegetables that may be an issue. Uh, thallium? Mm -hmm. I think that's what it says here, thallium in kale. I think that's the same person that had asked about kale and Dave Asprey. Okay. Um, you know, thallium, I'm very familiar with. Number one, thallium is on the elemental chart. I can tell you it's, I think, 201. Because in the cardiology world, we inject thallium into heart patients during a stress test to make radioactive pictures of their heart. We use other agents now, but I've written papers about thallium. You know, Metal contaminants, thallium's a metal, mercury is a much more common contaminant, arsenic, mercury, cadmium, they're real, and we're all exposed to them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we know that arsenic is concentrated in the way we raise chicken, and occasionally, sadly, rice. Uh, yes. you know, Basmati rice, wild mm -hmm. rice are less likely. Mm -hmm. uh, mercury is certainly concentrated in fish, larger fish like tuna, uh, yellowfin tuna, mackerel, shark. But it's showing up in perch and salmon and tilapia, smaller fish. Sardines are supposed to be less likely in herring. Um, cadmium smokers are very at risk. And thallium's just out there. I don't have a real source. 
Bottom line is, if you're concerned, these all can be tested for in a right. urine blood test, a hair test, which I find a lot of mercury in my high-end patients eating great restaurants, travel, mm -hmm. great markets. They're eating a lot of salmon or they're eating a lot of particularly sushi, ahi tuna. Yeah. And they got a lot of mercury. Mercury is a bad actor. It can raise your blood pressure, raise your cholesterol, affect your brain long term. And so are all these metals, including thallium. Um, you know, the exposure to metals are all less in plants. They're not zero, but they're definitely less, um, you know, I'm not sure you can wash off metals. They could be incorporated in the structure of plants. Plus, with plants, you're getting fiber, you're getting nutrients, you're getting yes. minerals, mm -hmm. you're getting antioxidants. You know, I think the average plant food has 63 times the antioxidant of the average animal food. So mm -hmm. you've, you've got some of the antidote to the problem. None of us live perfectly clean. All of us have glyphosate in our body. Even yeah. if we're eating organic, we just have less. I've checked mine. Yeah. It's there. It's very low. Um, you don't have to do these tests. You can be very confident. You know, I enjoy a lot of chlorella every day, organic chlorella as a great natural infrared sauna, hydration, yeah. mm -hmm. minerals in my water. I have reverse osmosis at home, but I added back some trace minerals, so mm -hmm. a fulvic acid, humic acid and such. Mm -hmm. it, it isn't that much work to do. I mean, drink good water, maybe put some minerals in eat clean food. Chlorella is a superfood. It's amazing. And uh, spirulina too, if you get a really good source. So, you know, we can combat it. I mean, air quality is an issue. Well, you got to breathe. But you might choose to be a little careful in big urban settings. You might get an air filter at home. So, you know, we all live somewhat dirty lives, but plant-based eaters are protected to some degree. Yes, and I agree, and that's, I do the same thing, you know, spirulina, chlorella every day, sometimes some chlorophyll in my water. There's just, these are all just the daily things that, you know, that you can do to detox, you know, those right. toxins and those metals so that it doesn't right. accumulate in your, in your system. You know, we, we poop better, and that's detoxifying. Yeah. I mean, you know, a more rapid transit through the gut is a good way to eliminate some of the uh, contaminants that we're allowed to. So, you know, some of the carnivore eaters are pooping, but every three, four, five, six, seven days, well, that's a lot of contact with your colon. Mm -hmm. I'd much rather you be like a dog, you eat, you poop, or yeah. at, least, yeah. <laughs> at least a couple times a day. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. We've talked here before with the, with the, the gut health doctor. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Will, super Will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I have a little statement I've had on the web that you know you're vegan if it takes longer to pee than it does to poop. No. <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny. That's um, a good joke. Yeah. We had some questions about collagen. So yep. there are quite Love a few people yeah, who are plant-based um, right. but feel that they need the extra collagen. Uh, right. so, so what are your thoughts on collagen if you are you know, primarily the otherwise. The collagen and the bone broth craze, which is a multi-billion dollar industry, is really surrounded by essentially zero science. And you, mm -hmm. anybody can go to pubmed.gov, put in bone broth. And I'm not anti-bone broth. My friends sell bone broth. I don't want to slam them. But scientifically, there's zero. And there actually is a little concern because animals can concentrate heavy metals like humans. You take the bones of an animal and you boil them, you may release some of the stored, particularly lead. There's at least one research study. In fact, it's like the only research study you can find on bone broth, chicken based. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's different for cow based. But collagen, this is real simple science. A very famous double Nobel Prize winner, Linus Pauling, PhD, taught us you make collagen if you have enough vitamin C and a amino acid called lysine. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need to make collagen, whether you're an animal or a human. The mm -hmm. problem with humans are for most animals, lysine is a essential amino acid. You have to eat it. So mm -hmm. love lentils. Lentils are super rich in lysine, L-Y-S-I-N-E. It's available as a supplement too, if you want to. But um, vitamin C, what most people don't know, there's only four species on the planet that can't make vitamin C. Squirrels can, dogs can, cats can, but fruit bats, guinea pigs, some primates, and good old humans can't make a drop of vitamin C, which is why we can get scurvy. There, in fact, mm -hmm. uh, about eight weeks ago, I forget who it was, a rapper, I think, did the carnivore diet and reported in eight weeks he had some signs of bad gums and poor wow. teeth and bruising and scurvy, although a lot of the carnivore people say they don't have it. There was a report. 
So you need vitamin C. Well, what do we eat? We eat red bell peppers and we eat oranges and limes and leafy greens way more typically than the average American. We get way more vitamin C. Um, and by doing that, you know, eat lentils, eat greens, you're going to have great skin. You will make all the collagen you need, yeah. which includes collagen is not just skin and hair. It's arteries, it's organs. It may be one of the reasons there is, in many studies, less cardiovascular disease in plant eaters long term, just better nutrition for better collagen. Now, mm -hmm. you can buy plant-based collagen powders and capsules. Um, Alicia Silverstone and her brand, My Kind, has a vegan collagen powder. Uh, there's another great company from England that makes one. I have a couple bottles in my office. A few people ask. I don't think it's really necessary. Mm -hmm. I think, um, and if you really want to, you can inexpensively on the web buy vitamin C lysine capsules or powders mm -hmm. for pennies a day. And there is a specific cardiovascular condition I use that a lot in, but it never hurts anybody to take. Um, but it, you can do it through food. There, mm -hmm. you know, better skin through plant-based eating is a scientifically documented, you know, potential outcome. Again, mm -hmm. can't guarantee. Uh, but it's more likely. So, uh, you know, you don't need to necessarily rush out and get, you know, uh, uh, bone broth, collagen, turmeric mixes that every vitamin shop in the world sells nowadays. Right. That's and that I'm I'm so glad that you said that because it was such a it was such a repetitive question that came up, you know, what about collagen? And so you're really the first to express that opinion. Yeah. And I I thank you for sharing that. And I would say, you know, I haven't always been vegan or plant-based, um, but I had a very noticeable difference in my skin, you know, once I went plant-based and people thought I looked younger. Than you I have some good plant. skin. Well, thank you. Um, I will say, and I don't like to be too promotional. It's your uh, Instagram live. I have a weekly podcast for 20 minutes called Heart Doc VIP. It's Vegan Integrated Preventive, Heart Doc VIP on iTunes, Spotify. Last week's episode was on how to have the best collagen through plant-based eating, how to have the best skin. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an interesting new research study that came out that triggered the thought. So, you know, anybody can go there. I don't do show notes because it's a real raw podcast. I just talk and run. But uh, it is available if anybody wants a little deeper dive. Yes, no, absolutely. And, and uh, if someone can put that up again, the name of uh, Dr. Khan's pot, or just, you can just go to iTunes and type in your name, yeah, right? Heart, heart, yeah, probably can do that. I, though I've been on so many other people's podcasts, it might take a while to find my own, but Heart Doc VIP. I've been on Dave Asprey's podcast, so you might get confused and find me there. Uh, uh, <laughs> the Heart Doc VIP. Do you have guests that go on that or is it basically you're giving all the information? Every time? Very restricted, but yes, I do at times. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I did it. I stopped because it was just more efficient and I mastered Skype and Zoom. So I'm back to doing it on occasion. That's amazing. Can I can talk. Have your people contact my people. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I will do that. There is There were a few people that had asked, um, what are safe levels of the heavy metals? So. You know, if you do get tested, I'm sure you'll have a doctor, but what's a safe level? Well, you know, there is no health benefit to heavy metals like the mercury, the arsenic, the can. They're always toxic. Now, they may not show up. It may be long term. It may be never, but kidney function, blood pressure, cholesterol, maybe brain health. Uh, of course, there's been a long time theory about aluminum, heavy metals, and brain health and Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. well, you know, a lot of us won't use deodorants with aluminum hydroxide and other things. Uh, there, there, there's no role, so less is better. And mm -hmm. just like radiation, there's a concept in medicine as low as uh, reasonably allowed. That should be the same concept. So, um, you know, uh, fish and chicken would be a good place to eliminate a lot of heavy metals. Uh, and I see them in my patients. That's again, I use a lot of chlorella. I'll use them for a sauna. Occasionally, you can use some other agents. Cilantro helps mm -hmm. eliminate. Cilantro, daily. Good, yeah. yeah, good hydration. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can go to other agents. N acetylcysteine helps you make more glutathione, which can mm -hmm. detoxify. Broccoli sprouts, you know, mm -hmm. sulforaphane, the active chemical that's really concentrated in broccoli sprouts, but also in broccoli, helps uh, rev up your liver to get rid of heavy metals. Mm -hmm. So I hope you guys are all taking notes. I have more questions that have come up. That was that was great. Someone had asked also, and I I'm sorry. This is this, and I want you uh, to actually share some about your books, Dr. Khan, before 
before we go because you have several best-selling books that I was able to share before you came on. And I think you have a book coming out soon, right? Uh, it, it is out. I do have that one sitting here because it's just in my study. Yes. Yeah, I have to say, too, you're very kind. I did write a book that came out January 2018 called The Plant-Based Solution. It's okay. a very simple read of the science of plant-based diet and heart disease, plant-based and diabetes, plant-based and brain, plant-based mm -hmm. and autoimmune. And then there's 70 plus plant-based recipes that came from the restaurant I have in Detroit, came from our kitchen. I didn't go for a professional recipe writer, but they've been really simple, good feedback. Um, and it's in paperback and it's everywhere. Uh, a very colorful, nice color cover. And then uh, just in March, this is a little obscure, but I am still a cardiologist. There's a kind of cholesterol you can inherit that nobody's heard of in 2020. You'll all hear about it over and over in the years ahead. It's pronounced lipoprotein little a. Mm -hmm. And one out of every four of us inherit lipoprotein little a from our parents. We don't know it. Nobody checks it. It's about $30 blood test. Every I check it. You've checked it. Good for you. I do. I have my clients check it. But there was, you know, there's enough to discuss. Nobody had ever written a book about it. So this is the first medical book. And fortunately, whole food plant-based diets have been reported to lower it. Not enough, but it's a start. And then there can be other strategies. So it also is accompanied this time by a professional plant-based recipe maker. Just some beautiful, colorful, simple ways you can alter your diet. So oh, the rest that's of beautiful. Them are worth but it's beautiful. a big part of my practice is dealing people with 35 years old that had a heart attack and the doctor says, you know, we don't know why there's nothing wrong with you. Well, it's uh, more often than not this inherited cholesterol. So if anybody particularly has a mother, father, grandparents, uncles, aunts, brother, sister that had early stroke, heart attack, stent bypass, you definitely want to be the one that says, has anybody checked the lipoprotein little a lab test? And most family docs still don't do it, but you might be able to convince them or read the book and then you can convince them. That's what Bob Harper, the biggest loser fitness trainer, had that uh, uh, reportedly caused him to have a heart attack, you know, dramatically and almost fatally three years ago and made the news, New York Times. So it got some press, but it, it'll be more discussed in the next few years because one of the pharmaceutical companies is working on a expensive drug, but then doctors will be taught about it. It's the way the yeah. world works. It, it unfortunately is, you know, I agree with you that I, because of my approach, when I work with clients, a lot of the times their doctors aren't like you, they're not integrative and they're not holistic and they're very, I guess, traditional and just allopathic, just Western. And so, you know, when I, when I ask them to order lipoprotein, a uh, yeah. protein panel, micronutrient panel, like cardio metabolic, like all these different panels that I mean, now I can order them myself for my clients. Right. But years before I wasn't able to do that, I, I would receive a little bit of pushback because they didn't okay. think that they were necessary. I get the same pushback. You know, mm -hmm. I actually coach if I don't order it myself, mm -hmm. I coach them. This is how you discuss it with your doctor. I literally, yes, want to this. Yeah. this is yeah. what you want to email your doctor and why, you know, Yes, yes. So it's and, funny that the education is kind of trickle up, not trickle down, but that's fine. Yeah, and I'm not even a doctor, you know, I'm a, I'm a nutritionist. And so it, it, I, it's, it's just so, it's just so great that there are doctors out you, like, you know, like you, out there you can help people in that way. Um, I definitely want someone, if someone could just type down the name of the book and where can we get the book, Dr. Khan? Is it I, on Amazon, yeah, on your website? On, yeah, it's out by a real publisher. So it's on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles and all the usual places. And it's okay. quite, in, quite inexpensive. It didn't come out paper, uh, hardcover. It went right to paperback because just wanted to keep the price down. Okay, great. So, I mean, I think that for a lot of the people who had questions specifically about uh, their parents, you know, we had questions of people who had come in saying, I, you know, I think I, I need to, how do I get my dad, you know, to shift over to a plant-based diet? Um, he's got, he's got high cholesterol markers. He's got, he's, you know, he might have heart disease, just different things. We did have people that were maybe not as concerned about themselves, but concerned about their loved ones and their parents and how to approach that. I would say buy the book, first of all, you guys, like go buy the book. <laughs> Buy the book, be the best example, you know, be upbeat, enjoy your food, don't be attacking, don't be criticizing, that's going to always tend to get people to push back. 
be patient because it does take a while in many cases. There's a, you're probably familiar, I think it's called Prochasco Behavioral uh, Psychology Theory. There's just some people that aren't ready. So you give them a list of documentaries, maybe you give them a book. Yeah. Six months from now, <clears throat> excuse me, one night, they're going to start reading it if you're patient. But if you're yeah. attacking them too much, you know, they'll just withdraw. And some people just won't do it. Some people will tell you. I'd rather die 10 years early with a whole host of problems. Yes, it's true. Some people will say that. I mean, I would say lead by example is always the great way. And especially if it's you're with your parents and you're going over there for dinner and a movie one night, then maybe suggest one of the documentaries that Dr. Khan had, had suggested and just watch it all together um, as if you haven't really watched it before and then just see what that insight is. I probably wouldn't wear a vegan or dye t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little more subtle and a little more loving. Yeah, nothing that says kale across it. <laughs> yeah, that would be fine. Um, there are some people that really wanted to know, can the plant-based diet really reverse heart disease? And yeah. it's interesting that that came up four or five times just in yeah. the course of this conversation. Yeah, and you know, it's really my main focus, early detection, prevention, and then reversal of heart disease. And you can say, you know, you can go back, you're in, you're on the West Coast, San Diego or LA? Uh, LA, Santa Monica. Actually. Okay, beautiful. So if you go into the Cedar sinai Hospital in the cardiology department, there's a big auditorium. I've lectured there. It's called the Lester Morrison MD Auditorium. Nobody knows who that is. In 1948, 1949, as an internal medicine specialist in LA, he did a 100 patient study. You've had a heart attack, just keep eating, or you've had a heart attack, here's the sheet. Stop mm -hmm. eating liver, stop eating butter, stop eating cheese and oils and eggs. At the end of 12 years, nobody was alive if they didn't change their diet, and 50% were alive if they changed their diet. And it's all published. But mm -hmm. he was largely forgotten except, and it was early in the game. There was no heart therapy. So food worked. Mm -hmm. Very dramatic. And then a Mr. Nathan Pritikin in Santa Barbara came down and met him, had his blood done. He had a horrible cholesterol. He was an engineer. But he got very interested, just a bright guy. He started recommending to friends, family, and got really excited and mm -hmm. set up the Pritikin Longevity Center in Santa Barbara, moved it to Santa Monica, mm -hmm. and then moved it to Miami after his death in 1985. Published all kinds of data, reverse diabetes, weight, cholesterol, blood pressure. Ultimately, it was Dr. Ornish. Now, you'd always want a bigger study, but the kind of research he did where he took serious heart patients five years on the lifestyle heart trial, plant-based yoga, meditation, group, walking, or five years on whatever your cardiologist tells you, the difference on internal and geography. I mean, totally the best science in 1988, 89, 91, 92. It was a dramatic, you could reverse plaque. And then Dr. Esselstyn, the Cleveland Clinic with a little less funding showed it. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ornish realized how much how many dollars this could save insurance companies to treat with lifestyle versus bypass and stuff. Yeah. It took 20 years, but in 2010, Medicare approved Dr. Ornish's lifestyle plant-based program and the Pritikin program, plant-based mm -hmm. and fitness, for reversal of heart disease. So there's no debate. It's approved by insurance companies. And you can go to UCLA and find an Ornish reversal program. Mm -hmm. You can go to Ann Arbor, Michigan and find a Pritikin reversal program. There's still not enough of them, but there's not even a debate. If your insurance company pays for it, they've reviewed the data and they're impressed with the science. In my own practice, I can't run people through catheterization over and over, but we look at their carotid art. I see plaque reversing in their carotid arteries all the time. Sometimes as soon as six months, 12, wow. 24 months. And one has to believe while that is being documented, you're also enjoying it in your heart, but it's not as easy to evaluate the tiny rapidly moving heart arteries as it is larger carotid arteries. So it's absolutely a deal. Would I love to do a larger big study of Mediterranean diet or mm -hmm. keto diet versus whole food plant-based using angiography or CT? I'd love to, but you're not gonna find the $100 million that you need to fund it because there's nobody who's gonna win and make money from it. You know, right? It would be an unusual, you'd have to have a donor step to the plate. and. Right. Uh, Pull it off. So Jeff Bezos, if you're listening, let's fund that study. Yes. <laughs> or John Mackey from my good friend from Whole Foods. Whole Foods. Let's yes. fund that study. Um, people would like to know if they can actually work with you. 
Um, I know that you do the telemedicine. Yeah. Uh, it, and is that probably the best way and you're still accessible to do that? Yes. Um, I just emailed somebody. I'm going to talk to him on Sunday because it's a little bit urgent. You know, I'm very flexible. It's my own schedule. But I do have a physical clinic in Detroit. Some people fly in more commonly before COVID, but telehealth works great. Um, I have licenses in many, many, many states and I can order what I want. Uh, but yes, it's called Khan Center for Cardiac Longevity. The URL is ConLongevityCenter.com. Or frankly, you could type it in. Anybody can email me. It's D-R-K-A-H-N at ConCenter.com. Just make sure you spell it K-A-H-N. D-R-Con at ConCenter.com. I answer my email and I enjoy the back and forth. Uh, and, and, and you guys, I can attest to that. Dr. Khan is amazing. He, I need to learn from you with emails. He's so great at answering emails and he's very quick about it. I try. Um, and for those of you who can see, I've pinned the comment here. Go to Dr. Khan's Instagram account as well and give him a follow if you don't already follow him because that, that also links them to everything else, correct? To, to your website, sure. your book, your podcast, everything. Right. It's all there. So that's a great place as Thank well. You. And that's um, D-R-J-K-A-H-N, Dr. J-K-A-H-N. Um, what is that? How many letters? Seven? Seven letters. <laughs> Easy to remember and right here pinned at the bottom of the screen where the comment is. And we had a few questions also, Dr. Khan, about your thoughts on celery juice. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I would you know, love to know what you think. I'm a big believer in practicality. If you're not drinking celery juice and if it used to be Diet Pepsi, I mean, there's no debate. If you're not, if you used to drink Bulletproof coffee and you're drinking celery juice, there's no debate. Low calorie, rich in nutrients. Um, you know, no added sugar. And if you're particularly buying organic celery, pretty low in contaminants. And I probably would for juicing stress organic produce if you can find it. Um, you know, is it a medically verified treatment of anything? No. Um, is it reasonable to believe it aids digestion and your microbiome and might have an influence on your blood sugar, blood cholesterol? Yeah, I believe it. I just I don't like to be too magical with what I do. I still like to find science in most of what I'm recommending to patients, mm -hmm. but I'm never ever going to push back on them doing that. I, you know, I personally have had a long tradition of juicing, and but it's usually very green, yeah, uh, uh, you know, low sugar uh, mm -hmm. juices that I make. So cellar juice is just great. I love that I can find it. I don't like plastic bottles, and you're in Santa Monica where we don't like single-use plastic bottles ever. Yeah. So you're better off juicing your own and putting it in a plastic jar anyways. Yeah. And it, 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 glass, a glass, glass container. Jar, yeah. Right, yeah. And it honestly, it takes like 15 minutes to, right. once you get into a rhythm of juicing your own juices, we do it it's, every morning. If there's any guys listening, juicing is very manly. It's like wood chipping. So I put on <laughs> a red and black, you know, lumberjack shirt and I just ram that stuff in. It gives yeah. me, you know, real machismo. <laughs> true and it well, especially with the celery i mean it is it's kind of like that morning work warm up to the workout um so right. so that's a that's a great uh, reminder uh dr khan you have several books so if someone wanted to get started on this journey with you is there one that you would recommend as their first one i know we talked about the new one the lipoprotein little a but you have several so yeah. in what order would you say to, to read them if you want a broad overview, mm -hmm. I, I probably have the only book out that really is like holistic cardiology. That's the first book. It's called Your Whole Heart Solution. Mm -hmm. It's a couple of years old, but food and sauna and meditation and grounding and earthing haven't gone out of style. So it's very relevant. And I really don't know a competitive book like it. Um, and if you want to just focus on nutrition, the plant-based solution would be it. Uh, the home run. And they're different because I talk about nutrition in your whole heart solution. But it's, you know, one or two chapters with a lot of other chapters from early detection to um, some other science based but funky supplements and all the mm -hmm. rest. Of it. Yeah. Well, I would say you guys get them all by all the books, you know, and someone just said we want all the books. Yes. At the I racy say one, there is a book called Vegan Sex, and I have two female co-authors, you may have shouted that out, uh, both vegan, and they wrote kind of the racy parts, I wrote the medical part. It also <laughs> has a zillion recipes, we, uh -huh. we could have made it 
even naughtier with breakfast in bed recipes. They're just good recipes. But, uh, <laughs> Well, good. That's all the books. And I would say you guys get all of them. I know that this has been really helpful for you, but sometimes it's easier to have tangible references. So I would say go get all the books, follow Dr. Khan, follow him on his Instagram and his socials um, and check out all his books and his podcasts, uh, which I will, I mean, I've already done that, but I'm going to jump on and check out whatever the latest one was. And someone had, uh, there were questions, about, this was an interesting question that just popped up. Does juicing and smoothies harm the endothelio? So what um, are your thoughts on yeah. that? Yeah, never been studied. There, the theory that sometimes leads people to criticize the practice. Number one, if you're juicing predominantly fruits, I'd rather eat whole fruit. It's a yeah. little better for your glycemic response. And you're missing, you know, you really, if you're eating fruit, and I encourage everybody to eat a lot of fruit, but eat it with the fiber, eat it with the complete package. Mm -hmm. um, and there's actually plenty of data, more fruit you eat, less risk of diabetes type two. It's the opposite of what you might hear in other settings. It's not the truth. It's not what very large studies, uh, half a million patients in China, a recent Harvard study with 130,000 people, more yeah. fruit, less diabetes. Um, the, the deal with smoothies is there's two problems and they're very minor. If you took everything you put in your smoothie and you put in a bowl and you ate it, you'd eat it slower, you'd be chewing it, and you might get full before you finish it. When you make a nice, beautiful smoothie, you know, it is pulverized, it's very easy to down it, and you might have more calories and quicker absorption of sugar and your blood sugar might respond adversely. I've done smoothies with a continuous glucose monitor just as a hacking thing. And oh, you, see, you can see your sugar going up a little bit. Yeah. And if I ate all that stuff slowly, I probably would have more time to digest. The cardiac comment is, if you're chewing green leafies, maybe you put spinach or, or arugula or kale in your um, smoothie, and I would rotate. You know, Liam Hemsworth may have gotten into some trouble doing you know, like a pound of spinach every day in his smoothie and he got kidney stones, although he told a naughty because he was actually eating fish last year, according to um, mm -hmm. our, our famous star that I'm blanking for a minute that uh, uh, Miley Cyrus. So I, I'm not sure there's what the authenticity of that story is. But well, <laughs> if you're chewing green leafies and you're not using scope and Listerine, which you probably shouldn't use for the antibiotics in your mouth, you will make hopefully more nitric oxide, better vascular health, better endothelial health, better sexual health, better brain health, lung health, immune health. If you guzzle them down, you might make less nitric oxide. You need some time for the green leafies to be on your tongue. It's this crazy, amazing system. So whenever you can, chew green leafies, take your time, enjoy it. Beets are the same. Beets are great to chew. They'll make you more nitric oxide, watermelon. If you juice them all, there's still plenty of health benefits. You just might miss out. And if you're like struggling with your blood pressure or if a guy's struggling with erectile function or you have heart disease, you probably want to concentrate on making more nitric oxide with whole foods. Mm -hmm. So those are all great tips. And I mean, I hope everyone's been taking notes. I know that, um, and, and I jumped on a little bit early this time, so I don't want us to get complete, I don't want us to get kicked off before we wrap up and say goodbye. But um, Dr. Khan, I want to at least take a moment just to say thank you again for staying you. on with us. And all and everyone, thank you for staying on with us. We're going to repeat one more time. Dr. Khan's uh, Instagram account is D-R-K-A-H-N. It's pinned at the bottom. D-R-J. Oh D-R-J. It's right there, though. D-R-J-K-A-H-N. Joel. Yes. It's, uh, it's pinned right there. So go follow him and you will be able to get to his website, his books, his podcasts. I would say go buy all his books because he is, you know, just a wealth You're of very, wealth. very kind. I appreciate it. I'm a big fan of yours. And uh, we'll see if we can reciprocate on the podcast and maybe we'll introduce you to my audience on Instagram. So thanks so much. Oh, yes. No, thank you. I love this. And um one more thing. Oh, yes, I will message you after this because I want to send you something. We have a we have a product that uh, my we have a product and it has all the amazing greens in it. And I just love to give it a to gift. My God. Them. Thank to you so much. That. Yeah. Everybody so, out there just go and buy it, even though I get a free one, but go buy it. <laughs> yeah, it's our just add water product, but you will definitely get some and just some special um just some wow. special gifts for for being so generous with your time. Thank um, you. But everyone, if there are questions that we didn't get to, I know there were some fasting questions. We could try to answer them until Instagram kicks us off. 
but people did want to know your thoughts on fasting for cardiovascular health. Yeah. Um, if you want to try that, or people can yeah. just ask you direct on your yeah. Instagram. It's a, it's a big focus of my practice. I tend to recommend, I mentioned the name already, Walter Longo, PhD at University of Southern California School of Medicine, and his product called Prolon, if you're not yes. familiar, five days, 800 calories a day. Plant-based, plant -based, although there is a little honey in the breakfast nut bar, and there are nuts if you're not allergic. But science-wise, this is the best science for fasting in the world, and now it's extending to using that system in actual diseases. It's not approved as a treatment program, mm -hmm. but to stimulate autophagy, renewal, yes. and regeneration. Dr. Longo's P-R-O-L-O-N is what I use in my practice. Now, I also have a big fan properly called time-restricted eating, mm -hmm. or maybe you eat in a 10-hour window. If you want to go more extreme, you can. You probably don't need to. But it's a reasonably good idea not to eat late at night. So maybe 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. would be something that doesn't completely destroy your life and your fun. It's a good thing to do. There's a little debate about breakfast or not breakfast. Uh, nobody really has the ultimate answer. You can find data. So, yeah, I use fasting a lot of my patients and since prolon is plant-based and it's gluten-free and it's non-gmo and they just have a new one out now that's uh, absent inulin and nightshades mm -hmm. for a lot of people it's the first chance i have to show them you know the impact of plant-based gluten-free i'm not a big fan of gluten-free for everybody but nonetheless non -G there's so many topics i can teach them in five days and often although it can be a struggle to follow a five-day 800 calorie program they still feel good and they might actually notice their weight. They might notice inflammation. If I do blood work, we'll notice differences. So it's a great teaching tool that I just hand them a box and they're off yeah. and running. Yeah, I do the same. I actually have done it um, and I'm going into my third month. So I'm, tr I'm doing it like a five day stretch for three months in a row, which is what they right. recommended. And it's, it's really easy. I mean, obviously we love whole foods. So ideally, you know, you want to be able to nurse your day about, with whole foods, but this is a great five day fast. Um, yeah, I just and I a new one. A... You, could, you could reach out to the company. It's a brand new called Prolon Pro. Only health professionals like you and me can offer it. It's not on the web, but okay. it is almost no inulin. And some people had a problem. Oh, with it. great. No nightshades for those that were concerned about inflammation. Yeah. Okay, Somebody asked about Irish sea moss. I'm a big fan of Irish sea moss. Me it's too. A zillion okay. minerals. I don't remember if it's 98 of the 102, but it's some incredible uh, product that you can make a smoothie or a drink from. So big fan. So awesome. Well, you guys, I know that we're getting kicked off. I had some messages saying we lost you. So we'll continue on. Um, maybe we'll do it again another time, Dr. Khan. What do you think? I'm there. You're okay, invited. awesome. All right. Thanks. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you bye guys bye. soon.